So looking at some sample slides, this one is, I believe, called a compare and contrast slide in PowerPoint. And this is just an example from another PowerPoint presentation that I made about poster presentations. And it's a good way to showcase pros and cons or to compare and contrast two different things. As you can see, there's sort of two little mini text boxes there. And um, so that can be a really useful one. Here's another one. I believe this one's called a picture caption slide. And it's a good way to showcase graphics like tables and charts, things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, you can have a little explanatory caption in the box to the left. This one is a section header slide. So these are good for transitions. This is another picture and caption. This one has two captions in addition to the picture. That's my cat, Ash, who's super cute. That was when she was a kitten. So it's just there to illustrate that that's where the picture goes. And then you have the option for two text boxes underneath. She was looking at a bird in that picture, I think. Very alert. She is much bigger than that now. Okay, so moving along from slide design to some tips for speakers. Are you one of the many, 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 many people who are petrified of public speaking? You are definitely not alone. Jerry Seinfeld, the comedian, he used to say that there was a survey done of Americans asking them about their greatest fears, and that number one was public speaking, and number two was death. So for most people taking that survey, if they were at a funeral, they'd rather be in the casket than delivering the eulogy. So maybe you can relate to that. Um, I actually, actually used to get really nervous before I you know, started teaching, and now it's just like second nature. But I remember that feeling of nervousness, and it's not fun. So if you are nervous, what can you do about it? Well, the first thing you can do is prepare, 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 practice, practice, practice. The more prepared you are, and the more you practice, the more confident you're going to feel. I can promise you that because it's always the fear of making a mistake, of being judged. That's what makes us nervous. So if you are just prepared out the yin-yang and you've practiced it a ton, you're not going to be scared. It's a good idea to practice with an audience if you can, even if it's just one person to watch you. Somebody who can give you some nonverbal feedback as you go, somebody who can give you some feedback at the end about, oh, you went a little fast here, or this point was a little unclear. It's a really good idea to do that if you can, and I'm available for that as well. If you ever want to do a presentation for me, I'm happy to help with that. Um, write really good notes. You can use index cards, um, or you can just, you know, if you think you can go by your slides, that's good too. But sometimes, you know, we need a little bit more, so you can write yourself notes. PowerPoint also has a feature where you can write and print notes to yourself. But my hesitation with using that is this. If you are nervous and you're trying to hold actual full sheets of paper up there during your presentation, the paper tends to rattle if your hands shake a little bit and it makes this really exaggerated rattling sound. If you use index cards, you're a lot less likely to get that. So I like to get one of those spiral bound index card notebooks. That way, if you drop it, the cards aren't gonna go everywhere and you're not gonna get them out of order and you're just gonna get to pick up your little notebook. Um, so write yourself notes if that makes you feel more confident and then you can use your slides to jog your memory if you get lost along the way. So therapists will tell you to fake it till you make it. And this really works very well in a public speaking setting as well. If you are nervous, the last thing you want to do is show that you are nervous. Because if you've ever been in the audience at a presentation where somebody's really nervous, don't you just hate it for them and you're embarrassed for them and you're worried for them and it really takes you out of the moment and it, it makes you less able to focus on what they're saying. Um, and it becomes a sort of self-perpetuating thing where the speaker is nervous and then the audience is giving kind of weird feedback because they're nervous now and it's self-perpetuating. So fake confidence. What does that mean in practice? That means wear an outfit you feel like a million bucks in. Fix your hair. You know, fix your makeup if you wear makeup. Wear something that makes you feel confident. Focus on your body language, meaning take a minute before you go out, stand up straight, put your shoulders back, smile. Even if you have to practice that in the mirror beforehand, that's not nerdy, go for it, practice it. Practice your smile, practice standing up straight and putting your shoulders back and body language and all that kind of stuff. And just fake it. Do not tell the audience that you're nervous. <laughs> Please don't do that to yourself and don't do that to them either. Don't you hate that when people get up and they say, I'm so nervous, please bear with me. Just don't say that. Don't say it, fake it, fake confidence and you'll feel more confident. Visit the site beforehand is another great tip. 
And there's a lot of reasons for this. One is because sometimes it affects how you design your slides. Like we talked about, if the lights are going to be off, then one type of font on one type of background works better versus if they're going to be on. If it's going to be a big room versus a small room, it's going to help you with font size and all that kind of stuff. So that's one reason to do it. Another reason to do it is um, we like to have a podium to hang on to, especially if we're nervous. And you can see if there's going to be a podium. If there's not going to be a podium, sometimes you can ask for a podium in advance, but you're not going to be able to do that if it's the last minute. So go beforehand. You can also familiarize yourself with the technology. If you are a technophobe like me and computer stuff does not come naturally to you, then that can be really terrifying. And there is nothing worse for an already nervous tummy before a presentation than to run into a last minute complication with the computer. So you can make sure you know how to use it. Make sure you have the telephone number of the IT person who can come and rescue you if it goes wrong on the day, all that good stuff. Another thing to do if you're nervous is work hard on your introduction because if you start strong, you're going to stay strong. You're going to feel strong throughout the whole thing. And another tip, laugh off mistakes. You know, when you watch somebody do a presentation and they make a mistake, they flub a line or they get something in their eye or they drop their notes or something, you know, you don't feel like, oh, what a doofus, you know, like you just, you don't, especially if they just manage to laugh it off. Two seconds later, you've forgotten about it. The only time it becomes a big deal is when the speaker makes it a big deal. Oh, no, I made a mistake. And then you can see them falling apart and, you know, then you feel bad for them and it kind of ruins the whole thing. So if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Just laugh it off or don't even acknowledge it. And then, like I said, 10 seconds later, everybody will have forgotten about it. I make mistakes all the time. So other tips for nervous Nellies, make eye contact with somebody in the audience, especially if there's a friendly face or two out there, people you know and you know support you, make eye contact with them. It's also going to build positive ethos with your audience, meaning trust. They're going to trust that you're, you're there, you know what you're talking about, you're confident, you feel good about what you're saying, and that makes um, a much more positive impression than someone who's looking down at their notes all the time and mumbling and seeming to be nervous. Um, if you don't like making eye contact, if you are um, uncomfortable with that, that's totally fine, but you can pretend that you're making eye contact by looking between the heads of people in the audience. The point is to look up because that means that your audience is going to feel like you're engaging with them. And that's really important for building that positive ethos that we talked about. Another tip is to concentrate on your purpose versus concentrating on, oh, I might make a mistake or worrying about how you sound or if you're going to mess up. So really think before you go out on what is the message that I want to get across? What do I want to accomplish with this? And really try to keep your mind on that. Self-talk is so important. What we say to ourselves is powerful. And if your self-talk is all, don't screw up, don't screw up, don't screw up, then that may very well be self-fulfilling. And you may screw up just because you've worked yourself into a lather. So concentrate on what you want to say, not how you're going to say it. And this is a tip that, you know, I was a theater major for a while in undergrad, and um, I know a lot of musicians and singers and actors and performers of all types will swear by this, to just simply go somewhere quiet, bathroom stall, right outside in the hallway, wherever, before your presentation, sit down, center yourself, and just take five or ten really slow, deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Don't rush it. It's a good idea to count. Just, you know, one, two, three, four, five in, and then one, two, three, four, five out. And always in through the nose and out through the mouth. Don't rush it. Go slowly, and you will be amazed at how much it helps. It really, really does help to, to calm your nerves. So those are some tips. You can probably find lots more if you Google, you know, overcoming nervousness with public speaking. There's lots and lots of great tips out there. So let's review what we have learned so far. So a good presentation is focused, it is clear with a clear purpose, it is well organized with an introduction, a body, and a conclusion, it is visually appealing with a nice mix of images and text, it's easy to read, it's well delivered with a speaker who knows the material, narrates versus reading slides, makes eye contact or seems to, engages with the audience instead of simply talking at them, and offers handouts if relevant. Now. You may have hoped that I was going to cover actually how to use the software, how to use PowerPoint, and that's obviously not what this presentation was about. But if you're unfamiliar with the PowerPoint software, here are some online PowerPoint tutorials that you can check out. 
You also might just simply want to use PowerPoint's own demo, which is very, very good, covers a wealth of different situations that you might be in PowerPoint, and um, there's a lot more than this available online as well, if you're not familiar with the software itself. And I'd also like to put in a plug for Prezi, um, which is kind of the other wool presentation that's out there. I think Prezi is really cool. So if you've never checked it out, it's P-R-E-Z-I. And it sort of follows, whereas PowerPoint is very linear, you know, one slide one, slide two, slide three, and encourages, you know, bullet points and whatnot, which is great for certain things. Prezi is a little more organic. It gives you more options of, you know, not necessarily just going from A to B to C, but you can jump around a little bit. It's hard to explain without you seeing it um, for yourself, but just Google Prezi and you'll see what I mean. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys, and please don't hesitate to send me an email if you need help. And I hope you guys have a terrific day. Happy presenting. Bye-bye.